keys to the ascended life by Apostle Michael Oropo. Stay safe and remain blessed as we draw from the fountain of life. Keys to the ascended life. Keys to the ascended life. John chapter 3 verse 13. Let's begin from the master himself. You know, the world is a warfare ground. The earth realm is a warfare ground. And the reason is simple. In the evolution of God's creative enterprise, the earth happens to be the last of God's creation. And so the way the operations of the spirit works is such that the dealings of God and the programs of God usually will be zoomed to where God is currently operating. And when you study the scripture, you discover that God's agenda now is in the earth realm. The heavens is like the realms of the report cards. When a civilization is over, the summation of the operations of God in that civilization is arrayed in the heavens and the ancients of that civilization are ranked as representatives of dispensations that are past. You know, when Paul was speaking in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10, he said, when this aeon is over, it will be wrapped up and all things will be summed up in Christ. And so when you even begin to study the person of Jesus Christ, you will discover that Jesus is not just a person. The reason God decided to encapsulate himself in form of a person is to help us understand the ways of God. Because the realms where God dwells is a realm unapproachable. The Bible said God dwells in light that is unapproachable. But you see, when God wanted to teach man his ways, he decided to envelope himself because he thought he would come into the garden in the cool of the day and bring man different syllables of the ways of God. And the ways of God derive from the nature of God. And so it was God's plan that as we behold him, we are changed. And so the Bible said in the cool of the day, the voice of God came walking in the garden because that was a school of the spirit. The first school of the spirit was in Eden. When God comes to walk in the garden, as man looks upon him, man is metamorphosed. You remember Paul said, we all with open faces. In 2 Corinthians 3, 18, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed. And so the way God teaches is not necessarily by talking. Talking became necessary because our spirits became dull. The way we were supposed to learn from God was to look upon him, was to perceive him, was to interact with him. You see the way the photocopying machine works. When you put the original, when the light passes, everything that is in the original is duplicated in the paper. So the paper becomes a graphic expression of the original. And so what God was doing in the garden was to pass through the garden in the form of light. And so as the man interacted with God and looked upon him, the man was transfigured. The journey was actually a journey of transfiguration so that he can host glory in different propensities. But when the man fell, he became dull. He could no longer perceive of the realities that exist in the mountains of Zion. Are you following? And so he descended into a realm where God had to create other ways of teaching him. God had to devise other means of transmitting his realities into him. That was when God began to talk. Adam, where are thou? You were supposed to interact with me the moment I show up. How come you are now disconnected from the presence? He was a fallen man. And it became difficult for this teaching to continue. It became difficult for these operational modalities of the divine to continue. Because God's nature will resist God from further interaction. He said, Thou, O Lord, out of a purer eyes. He said, Your eyes cannot behold iniquity. And this man now is laden with iniquity. In fact, for God to be able to interact with him in a measure, God had to cover him with blood. That's why when he covered himself with fig leaves, God looked at him and said, You used to operate at my mental frequency. You should know that figs can't function here. The only way I can touch you now is through the blood. And God had to look for an innocent animal and slay the animal 
so that the blood of the animal can cover the man for the time being. But the man could still not have the rich fellowship that was needed for transfiguration to take place. Because the blood was only protecting God's vengeance from licking him up. And so God kept looking for a way of revealing himself to man. Eventually, when no way was possible, God himself had to become man to show up and teach man the ways of God. So Jesus became the aggregation of the ways of God. He became the full revelation of everything divinity represented. So that when the man looks upon him, the man will be changed. But you see, the reason the man fell in the first place was because all the spirits in the realm know how God works. Even the devil who is falling knows that God has begun a new project. And so the whole attention of God is on the earth realm. And so if you must be relevant with God, you must have a stake in the earth realm. And the man was not aware that when God gave him authority over the earth, God made him a prince to operate in the galaxies of God. He was supposed to sit with God in the council of heaven to participate with him in matters of kingdom legislation. He thought it was just about loafing around and eating what he wanted to eat and enjoying a good time. He didn't know that he was a prince representing a constituency because before earth was created, there were many heavens. He said in the beginning, God created the heavens. Many projects have ended. Many princes have perfected the act of guardianship and they have submitted their report card in heaven. And this man was given a new operation so that when he perfects it, he too will join the elders beyond the cloud. But he didn't know that a civilization, a government was unfolding. He thought it was about pleasure. And so those who lost their place and saw that relevance was a function of governmental interaction were looking for another opportunity to handle a scepter. And right now, the only vacant scepter in the realm, vacant because the holder is a novice, was man. The devil cannot go to Micah and look for scepter. The age of Micah has been completed. It's now an ark. That means he's the first in that civilization. He represents that order before God. You can't go to Micah and look for a mantle. He has perfected the operation of his age. Now he is an elder in Zion. You can't go to any of the princes in heaven. They know the ways of God. All of them are as ancient as you are. They have the same understanding that you have. The only novice in the realm was a man who thought apples were too good. And he could betray his destiny with an apple. And so the devil lured him to give up his dominion. If the man knew that he was in the center of battle, maybe he would have guarded it with his life. But he didn't know that he represented something that was so important. He didn't even know what it cost God to come to the garden. God doesn't come. You go. Because the way he operates in the heavens is that he sits on the throne. The 20 and 4 elders fall on their faces. It's an honor to even come to the courtroom. That was why when Gabriel came to Zacharias and gave him a word and he doubted him, he looked at him and said, ah, do you know the height where I came from? I'm, I'm coming from a height from the heavens. I stand in the presence. I am Gabriel, in case you have not heard. Maybe you have not studied the chronicles of the heavens, but I'm popular in that realm. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I came all the way from the throne room to give you glad tidings and you doubt me. Now to show you that I'm a prince of authority, I don't need to consult with God. You are dumb. <laughs> there was no need for consultation and God didn't ask him, but I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence. I'm a prince. I come from a height. I have a place in Mount Zion. You will be dumb until the day of this manifestation. And the man became dumb. And there was no record that anybody was angry. Because the prince was carrying out legislation. <laughs> the man was not aware. And so he gave up his authority. And because that happened, the prince now has authority to appear in the throne room. You know, the devil was cast away from the throne room. He no longer have authority to appear there. The Bible said, you shall be cast as profane from the mountains of God. But now that he has collected the scepter of the guardian of the earth realm, even if God doesn't like it, he will now appear. 
And the Bible said in the days of Job that the sons of God came to appear before God and they said, Satan also came. How can a profane prince now appear in the throne room because he's now operating by a scepter? Hope you know when the devil tempted Christ, he told him, bow down to me. I will give you all of this because it has been given to me. So the whole authority the devil exercises now is the authority of the first guardian who didn't know who he was. And so now when the devil enters the throne room, he has legitimacy. Until this age is over, you can't punish him from there. Because he is also now having the designation of a son of God. Even though he has been cast from the mountain. Because Adam gave him that right. And he can come now and negotiate over matters of legislation. How could he go to Jesus after 40 days fasting? When Jesus fasts for 40 days, that should be when he was blazing with holiness and power. The presence should have been tangible. But he came as Adam. He no longer comes as Lucifer. As Lucifer, he doesn't have a seat in heaven. But as Adam, he has a place there. And so when Jesus finished fasting, he took off the garment of Lucifer and he wore the garment of Adam. That's why the Bible said, even the devil can change himself. He can wear many garments. And so for him now to participate in matters of government, he will clothe himself as Adam. And even in the third heavens, he can still appear. And he showed up and told Jesus, bow to me. He can negotiate terms and conditions now in the throne room because he's wielding the scepter of Adam. But you see, Jesus discovered, the Lord discovered that if he's operating like that, there will be a problem. There will be a problem because you and I may not have sufficient stake to carry out governmental matters. And so what God did was in Christ, he decided to begin to mass produce another kind of Adam. Because that seat is only for Adam. Adam represents a seat, a prince, and a throne. And now there is somebody masquerading as an Adam. So Jesus, God had to send the last Adam. And so when the last Adam came, he no longer came as an individual. He now came as a possibility. And so when Christ resurrected, the Holy Ghost is transferred into every one of us so that Adams can become mass-produced. And so it is not only the first Adam that can go there. When he goes there and does something, we can now come as a quorum. And whatever we bind on earth can now be bound in heaven. Because now we have another Adamic throne in the heavens. And this throne is superior to the first one. And I will tell you why. Because the first one, an individual is the one representing it. But the last one is a church. It's a people. It's a congregation. It's a quorum. There's a new kind of authority that we now have to have a place where it matters. Why am I saying this? Because mounting up is our calling of authority. If any one of us cannot mount up to operate there, those who go there can come here and marginalize them. The reason many Christians are marginalized is because they are not standing where princes are standing. They don't know why Christ had to come and die and resurrect. It was not just about taking away your sin. It's about restoring you back as a prince so that you can carry out matters of kingdom, matters of dominion, matters of legislation. Because there will be a prince that will resist your ordination. Hope you know the Bible said there are wicked spirits in heavenly places. So you too must function in heavenly places. If you can't function from there, you will lose on earth. The earth is a descended realm. Because when Adam fell, the foundation of the earth was out of course. And so anybody who wants to exercise authority on the earth realm must know how to ascend and live from there. And so our anchor scripture, which is John chapter 3 verse 13, revealed to us how Jesus exercised authority on the earth. He knew the technology. And so the Bible speaking concerning Jesus, he said, no man has ascended to heaven because the only man who should have ascended didn't. Adam should have been the one to ascend, but he didn't. He gave his place to Lucifer. And so Lucifer started ascending in his place. And when the sons of God gather, you won't find Adam. You will find another prince who is wearing a garment that would have belonged to the original. And he said, no man has ascended to heaven. But he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is. So he came down from heaven 
but he's not living on earth. He came down from heaven to become part of us. And now for him to function, he has to function from there. So he didn't come down, he didn't come down from heaven to live on earth. He said, the son of man that came down from heaven, which is, you would think, the Bible will say he's on earth. If they say he came down from heaven, he should be on earth. But if you're on earth, you'll be defeated, no matter who you are. And so even though he came down from heaven, he didn't live on earth. He lived in heaven. And so mounting up and functioning from the heavenlies is our calling. Anybody who cannot function from that height will be defeated. Because authority in the kingdom is a function of height. And that was why when Jesus resurrected, he didn't leave us on earth. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 21, the Bible said he is seated high above. Because if you are not above any being, you can't rule over that being. So he had to sit high above all principalities and power. It's a game of authority. It's a game of kingdom. Listen, you and I can be called apostles. But the level of influence we wield in our generation will be a function of the height we are, we are operating from. It's not about the title. The title is just a definition of operation. Authority is a function of height. If you don't have that height, you can never advance God's agenda. So why Jesus was walking on earth, the secret to the authority exercise is that he is in heaven. And the reason you and I can function in that same authority is because where he's seated high above principalities and powers, Ephesians 2 verse 6 said he gave us a place there to be seated with him in the heavenly places. And so any believer who is not functioning from the heavenly places is a slave waiting for the slaughter. That's why the Bible said there's an evil day. You know, the devil has a programmed operation. Every one of us sitting here, he has marked out the day of our death. Because he doesn't know who is sitting up and he doesn't know who is walking on it. So what he does is that he creates a program of mass destruction for all of us. When it comes to you, and you operate from a higher realm, he will say, this one is high, he will leave you, and he will go to the next person. All of us already have a program in the calendar of the devil. But you see, what you call a testimony and a manifestation, it is you exercising dominion. The person who cannot exercise dominion will die. The person who cannot exercise dominion will be defeated. And so every believer must function from the heights of Zion. But you see, when you study the scripture, there are keys. There are programs. There are protocols. There are requirements. You don't have authority unless you are ascended. But it takes certain spiritual protocols to operate from those heights. And the essence of this conference is not just to heal the sick. The essence of this conference is not just to prophesy. The essence of this conference is not just to set men on fire is to show them the ladders that leads to the corridors of Zion so that every one of us will be functioning on earth as a prince of heaven because that is our high calling. Every time you go higher, your authority increases. When Jesus was on earth, he was functioning from heaven. When Jesus resurrected, he sat above all principalities and powers. And when he resurrected in Ephesians 4.10, the Bible said he went high above all heavens. So that he can feel all things. So that he can regulate all things. So the authorities are in cadres, And those cadres are a function of height. The question tonight is, where are you operating from? I know you love Kaduna. You say, we, we own this land. We have authority here. We know everywhere. Better know places beyond Kaduna. Otherwise you'll be a slave. Your age here won't count. Your experience here won't count because when the prince comes, he will check from what height you are functioning. And even in your bedroom, a prince can enslave you if he's higher than you in the corridors where it matters. You know, Paul was teaching and coincidentally, he started saying some things that look like a doctrinal error. Because he will perceive that, oh, all of us should cast out devils. And he came and said there are different kinds of devils. He said when you see a demon, you cast him out. He doesn't have, he can't operate from height. He looks for men to sit in them. He said, but when you meet principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, he said, prepare to wrestle. 
Because that one, there will be contention. Questions will be asked. Where are you operating from? If you don't have a throne, and if you are not operating from a height, you will be undermined. You will be about mounting up. Ali, <laughs> I didn't bring. Huh? Then you see theologians. You will now sit down and say, no. Somebody will hear what I'm saying now and say, Kai, wait. You will now quote Ephesians 1.21, quote Ephesians 2.6. Say, Christ is seated far above principalities and powers. And you say, we are seated with him. Paul said something. He said, if you claim that you are dead with Christ and you are risen with him, in Colossians 3 from verse 1, he said, let your affection be on the things above. That means, where your affection is, is what determines your direction. So if your affection is not towards Christ, you will descend. You will descend. Because there are protocols. You don't know this. As I'm talking to you now, there are many Christians dying in the hospital. And there are other Christians that if you carry their handkerchief, they can heal the sick. And then you are asking, what is the difference? All of them have the Holy Ghost. All of them have eternal life. But where you are seated is what determines what you manifest. So why all of us are seated with Christ in heavenly places... One dies of cancer. The other one, his handkerchief heals cancer. And then you say, what happened? See, there are some things you don't need to argue. Go to the hospital, you will know the difference. That your doctrine is wrong. It's a function of height. There are many Christians that have labored for more than 20 years. Nothing is working. Another Christian walks up to them and says, I opened the door. And because he said it, the door of 20 years... That you have been fasting and praying, but Lord, we open. If you are arrogant, you will die where you are. We are not the same. In salvation, we are equal, but in kingdom, we are different. Because one of the things that determine your rank is the height where you are functioning from. There are ladders in heaven and there are cadres in the spirit. You will determine where you stand based on what you know and what you engage. This conference will bring you into heights. Heights where you can exert authority you will be shocked. See this meeting we are having here and we say tomorrow is miracle service. There are some men that will walk into this meeting. They won't preach. Because they walked in, sicknesses will go out. They don't need to talk. You don't need to announce a miracle service. You will need to go and trust God. You will need to come with scriptures to stir the faith of people. Another man walks into this place and because he's coming, the entourage, he enters here with even sickness knows it can't stay. And then you start taking testimonies. You hear cancers leaving, blind eyes opening. And you are wondering what happened. We are all born again, sir. We all have eternal life, but we are different corridors. Break forth, O oh, fountains of the deep. Cry out, God. You are my seed on.
sit down. Let me explain some things. Time is a, is a challenge. And so there are keys. If you deploy them, you will ascend. You know, the Lord began to teach me recently because I was studying Psalm 8 from verse 4 where David said, what is man that you are mindful of him? Draw man, you draw. <laughs> I went into my, my biology. <laughs> and as I started thinking along that line, he now asked me, is it the physical man you want to draw or the spirit man? <laughs> this is God trying to use my language to help me. There is a physical man that is looking the way you and I are looking. There is a spiritual man that has different things in him that you can't see. For example, all of us sitting here have horns. <laughs> I know you think it's the devil that has horns. When the psalmist say, my horn shall thou exhort. He's talking about a spiritual reality. When you see, that's it. It's in the angelic order. Their full shape is revealed. So you can appreciate their glory. But you see, the reason our full shape is not revealed is because the Lord decided to hide this glory in earthen vessel. So even in eternity, they won't show us completely. But if they show you who you are, you'll be ashamed. You'll be afraid. When he said you are dangerously, fearfully, and dangerously made, it was not a metaphor. Some of us here have wings. Wings. Some of you here, your garment is fire. Some of you, your garment is light. If you see your spiritual essence, it will shock you and you will know you have not entered your reality. When he say, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water, you, if God begins to open the layers and the compartments of man, you will be amazed. But you see, a theologian will call it metaphors. You don't know why one person is talking and his voice is watering nations. And then you are wondering, what's happened? It's a river. Something has been unlocked. And so whatever he carries and says will come with so much pressure that a generation must respond to it. Because something has opened. And then God, and that's the spirit man. God now said, how about the compound man? Because the compound man cannot be differentiated from the Holy Spirit. It's a him that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So if you want to draw that man, who will you draw? May God give us understanding to find who we are in time before we live here. But before I delve in, let's face what we are doing. Keys for mounting up, for ascension. I'll just give you three. And then I'll make some declarations and we'll go. Number one. Is the art of waiting. Hmm. I'm about to show you why we are not the same. And I'm about to show you why you are probably earthy and a citizen of the earth. Because when you start probing these truths, if you are honest to yourself, you will tell, you will know why you are where you are. Because these things, they are eternal. They don't lie. The Bible began to speak in Isaiah 40 from verse 28. Hear what it says. Because he, he had to ex expound and define these realities from the natural dimension of man. So that you will know that this is a progression. He said, has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God fainted not. Now, he's beginning with God because he's showing you where he's trying to channel your propensities to. Because as you ascend, you are coming into the God class and the God order. So he had to begin from there. That ideally, the natural man has no basis by which he can be put side by side with God. There's nothing about him that resembles God. There's nothing about him that can carry out feats, dimensions, and possibilities that are divine. But you see, at the end of this chapter, it reveals to you that there is something that can happen to that man and he will begin to operate at the frequency of God. And so your advantage is not your natural abilities. But see the problem we have. We are developing our natural abilities and propensities and we ignore our spiritual propensities. Somebody goes to the university, 
for 15 years to come out with paper so that they can have a job. Why? Because the people who were trained by darkness came and designed the systems of this world. They designed it such that resources will only travel in the direction of the credentials that they place, not the credentials God placed. So you will have to, of necessity, train yourself to have those credentials in order to have access to those resources. Because the way they designed it is such that if you don't have that credential, you can't have that resource. So the reason you have to go to a university, apart from the fact that it develops your mind, which is good, to a very large extent, the whole goal is so that you can play a part in the, the, the class order and the chain, the chain of, 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 of value that they create. Because they know that everyone we want to have access to those resources. And so for 20 years, from primary school to secondary school to university, and we come back celebrating the certificate, not because we love the certificate, but the certificate gives us a sense of relevance in society because that's the value society plays on it. And the certificate becomes our key to get a job or to getting a job that will cause resources to flow in our direction. So for the 20 to 25 years, we have to follow that route in order to be societally relevant. You see the intelligence that is shaping civilization. Now, there's nothing wrong in going to school. I go to school. I've gone to school. That's not the point I'm making. But I'm telling you that there is another system trying to kick you out of God's order. There's another system trying to push you out of the divine system. So while you are developing yourself in that system, because beyond having a job, you are a messenger to that system. That's where superior value comes in. The reason you are training your mind is because you will talk to men and bring another kingdom to them. So for you, it's not about salary. For you, it's not about job. It's about having this, the legality to address that system. Because if I can't speak English, I can't talk to them. If I don't have understanding, I can't talk to them. In the realm of the spirit, I don't need English to commune. In the realm of the spirit, I don't need English to gain rank. In the name of, realm of the spirit, I don't need English to have stature. But in the realm of men, I must speak English. So I go to that school, not because they are my, my supplier. Because God is my supplier. My supplier is Ebenezer. But I will still go to that school because I need to be part of the system in order to address the system. So I'm not going to that school for salary. I'm going to that school because I'm a messenger to the earth realm. But see where we have missed it. We spend time developing our human side and we have no stake in Zion. So somebody has gone to school for 25 years. He has a certificate. He has a job which is good. But you ask him what is happening in the spirit is oblivious because he has not been taught how to wait. Meanwhile, his wings cannot come out in the university. The university is not built with the technology to teach him how to ascend. The university is not built with the technology to activate his God elements. And so the Bible is giving us another syllabus, a lecture here that is superior to biology, a lecture here that is superior to philosophy, a lecture here that is superior to psychology. He said, have thou not heard? Has thou not been told that the everlasting God fainted not? Neither is he weary. He said, but his understanding is past finding out. Go to the next verse. Help me, help me, help me. If I start quoting, I will enter inspiration. I can't follow my thought. He said, but he giveth power to the faith. The university can't give this kind of power. He giveth power to the faith unto them that have no might. He increases strength. And he's now telling you, just in case you think philosophy can give you a stake here, let me advise you. He said, even the youth shall faint. And the young men shall utterly fall. There is something about your ordination in Zion that no other institution is fortified to address. It's a day that wait upon the Lord. There is a new kind of lecturer that shows up. They that wait upon the Lord. He said he doesn't teach them biology. He said he renews their strength. He ma they mount up 
with wings like the eagle and he began a comparison hear this hear the comparison hear the comparison before he got there he told them something see what he told them in verse 29 I'm, ah, oh Jesus time, time. give me verse 29 let me show you something go to verse 30 This man, this man need a baptism. Now, before he got to verse 31, he told us about God. He said, God does not faint. He said, God does not get weary. And he now came to tell us that men, even if they are young, and the reason he used young men is because the best among men are the young ones. Your, the strength of a man, the peak of a man's ability is in his youth. He now said, even the youth shall faint. That means the best of men will faint. And he said they will utterly fall. He now said when we wait upon the Lord. He says something happened. A metamorphosis begins to take place. And he says suddenly. Whether you are young or old. It doesn't matter. Whether you are male or female. It doesn't matter. He said when you wait upon the Lord. Suddenly you run. You are no longer weary. You walk. You no longer faint. What is he telling you? The realm where God operates, you start operating at that realm. This one, chemistry cannot give it. This one, anatomy cannot give it. This one, physiology cannot give it. Does this discourage you from schooling? No. School, because when you receive from Zion, you need to go to that school. You will need to go to that society. But your original credential and power is the height you have ascended to. And so when you want to find the value of men, check how fast they get weary. Check how fast they faint. Because a man who is ascended, the sign is that there is strength in his spirit. That's why when men are cast down, he looks at you and he says, there is a lifting up. That's why when men are sick, he says, no one shall say in Zion, I am sick. That's why when nothing is working on the earth, he said, give a portion to seven, give a portion to eight. You know not the evil that comes upon the earth. He said, as thou knowest not how the bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child. That is how you do not know the ways of the Lord. So that man become a supernatural entity on the earth realm. But the key is they that wait. They that wait. You waited in the university, in the secondary school, and the primary school for 30 years to be called a PhD holder. How long have you waited in the spirit? There's nothing wrong in waiting in the university. Those certificates gave you, gave you access to the corridors where you are operating today. But you will be like every other person in that corridor. What will distinguish you in that corridor is the edge you bring from heaven that they don't have. And so while you are here training your mind in school, also train your spirit in the school of the spirit. Because the first school is not Harvard. The first school is not Oxford. The first school is Eden where the voice of the Lord came in the cool of the day and the man was intermingling with that voice and was becoming like God. They that wait. Are you seeing why we are earthy? Even though we should be heavenly. Are you seeing why we are mortals? Even though we should function like immortals. Paul was teaching in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3. He looked at them. He said, look at you. Are you not carnal? He said, are you not babe? He said, I could not speak to you like spiritual men. Because you are babes in Christ. He went to verse 2. He said, if there are arguments, if there are backbitings, if there are contentions among you, he said, are you not children? Are you not babies? And then he went to verse 3. He said, are you not behaving like ordinary men? What is Paul talking about? Paul is telling us that we are not supposed to walk as men. See what he said in verse 3. He said you are kana. He said there is envy, strife, division among you. He said you are walking like men. What is Paul saying? That means we are not supposed to walk like men. We are supposed to walk like supernatural beings. That's why Paul called us new creations. Because there is no name to call us. If he calls us any name that makes us a man, he has demoted us. We function in the class of the immortals. That's why when you close your hand, eyes to pray, the Holy Ghost shows up. When you are praying, angels show up. Because your community is no longer men. He said you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. To an innumerable company of angels. To the spirit of just men made perfect. Both those who are gone and those who are alive are the same. He 
He said, you walk as men. And we are so men that the world group us with them. So when you talk, they think you are man. And then you want to use theology to argue. No, what they are looking for is not theology. If you say you are not man, show us what you carry that makes you not a man. But we are not ascended. We are not ascended. When you learn biology, that's good. But learn waiting. Because why biology will give you a certificate? Waiting will take you to a realm. And the realm where waiting takes you to, you come out like the God that you encounter. And when you come out like that, you no longer go to a class to teach biology. You no longer go to a lab to do few experiments. You manifest the invincible God to a generation. And so the answers that biology cannot give them, your life become that answer. That's how God designed us. He didn't take us out of the world. We were participating in the world because we are the answer to the world. Jesus was praying. He said, I have not taken them out of the world. He said, I have left them here because there is an assignment we have to the world. But if all we have is what the world has, then we don't know why we are here. They that wait upon the Lord, they mount up with wings. Where are your wings? I've seen your certificate. I've heard your English, but where are your wings? Your wings are the things that makes you different. Your wings are your advantage. Where are your wings? The world is singing, you are singing. Where are your wings? They are speaking, you are speaking. Where are your wings? They are there. But until you wait, you can't mount up. It's when you wait, you mount up. What does waiting entail? Three things. Number one, patience. That's where we talk about stamina. 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 There is no man of authority that does not have stamina in the presence. Go and check. That's where we find consolation. That's where we find solace. Our gravity is our stamina in God's presence. You don't know why everything the devil is doing. This is called the Gen Z generation. Where everything is at a speed of light. Even food is fast food. Transport medium, fast. Everything fast. And you think God is also fast. No, he's an immortal king. When you come, you will stay there. The presence is not commanded. It descends like dew. And if you can't wait, it can't rest on you. And so anybody who wants to be transfigured, anybody who wants to mount up, must develop the capacity to wait. If you cannot sit there, if you cannot stay there, metamorphosis can't take place. Ascensions can't take place. Transfiguration cannot take place. I read about Moses and I almost went mad. The Bible said he climbed Sinai. You know how tall Mount Sinai is. It's over 7,000 feet tall. An 80 year old man was looking for the spirit that dwells upon the mountains. And he climbed it, climbed it with sandals without gloves for mountains. When he arrived there, he was supposed to have a lot of blisters. But the king had not appeared. And on that mountain, he waited and fasted for 40 days. And for 49. And suddenly, while he was yet fasting, he saw a finger came out of the spirit realm. And the Bible said the finger came as a flame of fire. And he was writing the laws upon the tablets of the stones. Nobody knew that it was possible to sculpt into a stone. But the spirit that created stone knew that information could be transmitted into their tablets. And suddenly a finger of fire came out and began to, to write laws that are immortal. It is the laws of Moses that is the foundation of human civilization. There's no nation on earth that has value system that didn't draw them from the laws of Moses. Even though they were studying things brought by demons, there was a superior knowledge that came from that mountain. Because one aged man decided to wait on that mountain for 40 days. When he came out, he didn't come as the Moses that went up. The Bible said Israel began to look for veils to cover his face. Even Moses did not know that something had happened. Because when you wait, the propensity of the divine is awoken on your inside. He said he wished not that his face shone. And Moses was glowing like an immortal among men. It was from that day that Moses was called an immortal being. Even God himself called him a God. But you see, theologians can't explain these things. They look at you and they say they are allegorical statements because they don't know where we came from. They don't know our destinies. They don't know why God left us here. 
God left us here to beam his reality to the earth realm. God left us here to show himself to a dying world. So that when they look upon us, they will touch God that they have heard about. John said that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. He said that's the fellowship we brought you. For us, fellowship is not a religious gathering. Fellowship is a place where God is beamed out of a man. And so when you show up, you touch the tangible dimension of the intangible God. But how can you do that if you have not ascended the mountains of God? When you climb that mountain, you will discover there's nothing like age there. His realm is eternal. That was where Moses entered and he entered into the foundation of time. And he wrote things that existed before man was created. Who is talking age there? No wonder at 120 his strength was not depleted. At 120 his eyesight was intact because he has gone to where life itself dwells. And when he came out, he came with measures of it. We don't have stamina. Somebody carries it, he wants to pray and his phone is by his side. Father, I thank you for today and he's going to check a chart. You don't know your calling. If you will function as a prince of heaven, Many hours, many days, you will stay there and the journey is even beyond time. So it's not even something you calculate with time. When you are a baby, you can time yourself. But when you mature, you wait for light. If it takes seven days, you will be there. You must touch something that is heavenly. And the more you build that stamina, the more your authority grows. Because when light comes, light is transmitted in packets. Is quanta. It appears as a continuous flow, but they are packets. And so sometimes you will stay there for weeks and for months for enough voltage to come on you. It's not something you can regulate with time. You regulate it with appetites. Appetites. Deep appetites that you will never be satisfied. Draw me and I will come after you. That was what the philosopher said. He said, draw us. Draw us. You are there, but you say, draw us. Draw us. We will come after you. Draw us. We want you to pull us closer. He said, we have found something that appetizes us more than the wine. He said, even the ointment of thy good pleasure, thy name, is poured forth at ointment. He said, because of that, the virgins love you. The virgins. The virgins are those who are separated unto God. God is their obsession. They have stamina. When they go into God's presence, that's where they come alive. The first definition of waiting is patience in God's presence. It's stamina in God's presence. If you don't have that stamina, you can't mount up. This is beyond the conference. This conference is for two days. The whole day of the conference is not even enough to mount up. It is when you leave this conference that you go and engage the altar in order to mount up. You can't mount up here. We have 48 hours for the whole conference. What is 48 hours? Do you know how far light is? Not because of geometrical space or ge geological or geographical space, but because it takes a lot for that spirit that is locked in your soul to come out. Before it comes out of your spirit, it takes time. Because the spirit is sealed on your inside to avoid corruption. You must stay there until the canopy of the presence encompass you. If there's no corruption in the atmosphere, that's when the spirit can be patient, can be assured and come out to interact with the one that is his delight. Because what your spirit longs for is the intercourse that existed before you were born. Because before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. You were one with him in eternity past. And while you yet walk through time, the goal of waiting is so that that intercourse can take place. You will tarry there until your spirit comes alive. Then your spirit will ascend like a mist into the heavens of God, to the sanctuaries of heaven, where intimacy takes place. We are weak because we cannot wait. The second thing waiting entails is surrender and submission. When you find men who are ascended, they are broken. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 to 6, he said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He said, in due time, 
they will exhort you. So the way God lifts men up, the way God provokes a mountain up in the spirit of men is when they decide to humble themselves. And so a man who waits before God is a man who understands God's authority and he decides to stay there. Because if you understand how waiting works, you can be in the market and be waiting. But this thing has to be a part of your life. A time you must take it away. A time will come when it must become what you do every day. And so you can wait in the plane. You can wait in the market. You can wait in the office because you are sensitive. Sometimes, while you are yet in the office, the word of the Lord comes to you and says, empty your account. So it has a seed to the orphanage. Yes, Lord. You have waited. Sometimes, you are there in the office. You are talking. People are talking. Say, keep quiet. Don't participate in this conversation. Yes, Lord. You have waited. They ask you a question. You smile. You would have loved to talk. In fact, they will be offended that you didn't talk. But there's another master. There's another governor. There's another ruler that is superintending over your soul. And so at this point, your will no longer counts. You submit to his will. Many things you want to do, he will restrain you. Because you need to be light to ascend. And most of the garbage that the world throws on your soul, you don't have the time to carry them. And so when God wants to help you to float in the spirit, what he will do is that he will keep a law over your soul. That law can happen anywhere. It can happen even when you are alone in your house, when you are in the market, or when you are with your boss. And so many things that you should have loved to do, he restrains you so that he can take you higher. And so it begins from patience and stamina in the presence. Then it translates to submission under the government of God. The mighty hand that lifts men up. Our world is a world full of people's tendencies, people's opinions. Everything that happens, everybody is saying his mind. Who told you you have a mind to say? The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. We have no opinion on any matter. It's God's position that is our position. You come to a world where men are proud, arrogant and full of themselves. People are jumping about like peacocks. Saying things, even hollow things that they know nothing about, they are talking about them. And then you think you can find God in our midst. We don't know the laws of the presence. We don't know the powers that regulate the activities in the realms of God. Because we live for ourselves and we do what we think is right. We don't check with the monarch to find out what his government dictates by time. Even the ones that are defined by the ordinances of God, we break them. People stand up and say, no, I'm no longer interested in this marriage. I don't love him anymore. Really? Who told you God came into the equation because of your emotion? When you went to the altar, you were bound by covenant. If you have emotions, that's good for you. Develop it. But the spirit that came, came on the basis of covenant. I don't like him anymore. I don't, we, we are not connecting. Co connect what? Why did you go to the altar? Even the ordinances of God, we violate them because we don't know the protocols. And that's why we are heavy on earth. Heavy. And the devil is marching on people, oppressing them. And you can't find the princes of our era. Men that will cry and angels will go to war. Jesus said, if I call on my father now, 12 legions, 12. That means when men cry, angels go to war. If they have authority in the heavens. And the thought in waiting entails is focus. Focus and sensitivity. The ability to pick signals. Signals. Because those signals are the flights of the spirit realm. They are the flights. If you miss it, you have missed your flight. You know, those of you who travel by air regularly, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you come to the airport three minutes away from the time and they say the plane is airborne. This airborne, you have seen the plane parked, but the doors are locked. It's airborne. You can't be on that flight. It's gone. The plane is still there, but it's gone. Because you missed the signal. You missed it. And that's when you will know that every one minute does not have the same value. 
there is a one minute that will cost you money, cost you a whole day, and even cost you a whole opportunity. Because not every one minute is the same. There is a one minute that the opportunity of your lifetime is invested in. If you miss that one minute, you will need another lifetime to succeed. There is a one minute that your promotion is invested in. If you miss it, that promotion is gone. You will wait for another cycle. That's how the realm works. And so men who are sent are men who are sensitive to the flights of the spirit. And this is why I love Ezekiel. He said, the spirit of the Lord took me by the lock of my hair. The man knew how to fly in the spirit. Many times, God will carry him to places and he will sit there as a watcher. And so any man who wants to operate in the ascended realm must master how to pick signals. And the key to picking signals is the ability to shut down distraction in your soul. There are certain things you must do to reduce the noise in your soul. And there are certain things you must do to amplify your sensitivity. If waiting is your goal, you will pay the price to keep your spirit aligned. Some of us were great football fans, mighty football analysts, but the noise became too much in the soul. The noise. We will watch one match and argue for three days. And then we are arguing the league for six months. But you see, there was a clock of destiny ticking. And so I had to forego and focus on my spirit man. Focus. That's why Paul was speaking. He said, if you say you are dead with Christ, let your affection be on the things above. You are like a watcher. You are watching, waiting for when the waters will be troubled. That's what Apostle Wefa was talking about. Somebody was there for 38 years because he couldn't take advantage of moments. And even when Jesus, the Lord of the waters himself came, he was still talking stories. Would thou be made whole? He went and started narrating 38 years story. And if mercy did not prevail, he would have remained there for another 38 years because he doesn't know moments. Will thou be made whole? Yes, Lord. It is over. Whereas there is somebody else who understood the technology called blind Bartimaeus. Jesus was not even coming for him, but he heard. He heard that he was passing. Who is that person you say is passing? He says, Jesus, son of David. Is he the one I heard? Open blind eyes. They said he's the one. But sorry, he's not coming for miracle service. I don't care if there's a miracle service. If he did it before, he can do it again. I don't care if there is a signs and wonder service. Son of David, have mercy. And they say, shut up. Shut what? You have not been blind before, so you don't know what you are talking about. I've been blind until my name is called Blind Bartimaeus. I will not shut up. When he turns to the left, they say shut up. He turns to the right. When he turns to the right, they say shut up. He moves forward. Thou son of David, have mercy. Thou son of David, have mercy. Even though Jesus did not come for him, he stopped him. And so there are many people that arrest the realm. And that's why hunger becomes a, a prized commodity in the spirit. You go there, you are calling on the name of the Lord. You are pulling out the oracles of God. A point will come. God will say, let's answer this man and rest. That's the parable Jesus told in Luke 18 from verse 1 to 6. There are men that arrest the realm. And, me, and there are other men that the realm opens. They are there until it closes. They didn't enter because they don't know the law of waiting. They ascended life. It's for those who have mastered the act of waiting. When they go there, they have stamina. And they come perpetually under the authority of God. And they know how to build their sensitivity. They build it through prayer. They build it through fasting. They build it through meditation. They build it through worship. Anything that raises that antenna, they are there. Why they are driving? Kakaparatoasa. Eferonto pakirakaya. Arakibatonza Paradegos, Abraconia, Naragadidis, Rakabanta Sipak, Barak de Gesiso, Baragota, and Bakira. As they are done praying, a chant is going on at the background. I will pray. I will pray. They are just doing everything to stir the spirit because sometimes the flight comes while you are in the bathroom. Sometimes the flight comes while you are driving. Sometimes, even when you are sleeping, but hear this. 
if you charge your spirit enough, you will be sleeping, your spirit will be awake. I know what I'm telling you. You can be sleeping and an angel comes to the room. Your spirit will come out of your body and enter transactions with that angel. You will finish, your spirit will enter back and what has happened will be real when you wake up. Because you are charged enough. You know how it works. Bishop David Oedebo tells us a story. He said he was in this same city, Kaduna, in the bathroom. As he was showering, he heard, Arise, get down to Lagos and raise for me a people. Today, they are building the Ark Project. 200,000 seater. Because a man picked the signal in the bathroom. This is why you cannot afford to be religious. See, when people are praying for a show, don't join them. Don't join them. When people are worshipping and think it's drama and acting like peacocks, don't join them. When you come, do serious business. It's a day that journey to the deep. They see the wonders of God. I don't care if you are doing a drama here. I'm searching for a sign in the spirit. See, hear this. Sometimes you come for prayer meeting. The person leading prayer is too full of flesh. If you were wonderfully blessed by these teachings, please like, share, and subscribe so that anytime we drop related content, you will be the first to be notified.